to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The Bible says, once upon a time, it leaves us with a story that is a compass to give us wisdom on how to correct the ills in society and produce a territory that glorifies God, restores human dignity, and makes advancement that reflects the love of the Father. Are we together? So there is a problem we are trying to diagnose right now. That Satan in the presence of God, because of treachery and treason, that he actually came to a point where he sold an idea we'll be reading shortly but that one third of the angels now we do not know how many angels are in heaven the bible does not give us the figure but at least we know the ones who fell with lucifer one third of these angels what gave him the audacity i will tell you satan's creation and satan's assignment is what gave him the audacity to believe I wish I had time we would have dealt with what we have called the parable of talents have you read the parable of talents that says there was a man who came and gave on to three people five talents two talents and one talent that thing you see is not just a parable talking about money there is prophecy hidden in it it reveals something that happened years ago but anyway let's go back to our subject for tonight so Satan prevailed not read on please the Bible says neither was found any place for him in heaven so he's about to be displaced now and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent even at that time he was old called the devil so that there's no confusion and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him so this is where the relocation happened now from heaven came to the earth next verse and i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our god and the power of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our god day and night 11 and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony so satan was cast down from heaven he came to the earth now watch this scene one tells us that satan rebelled against god michael fought him scene two shows us the misery and the disgrace of satan is that true we see satan cast down in shame in fact he says woe to the inhabitants of the earth for satan that dragon has come down with great fury the next time we hear about satan everybody on earth was under his control what a man what a spirit really not a man satan is not a man if he was a man there would have been a possibility for his sins being forgiven because salvation is for men so satan is not a man that's one of the reasons why he cannot be saved salvation is for men are we together now so satan is cast to the earth follow me to matthew chapter 4 jesus now comes in the flesh as the son of mary matthew chapter 4 let's start from verse 1 please and jesus was led up of the spirit this was after his baptism 
he was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil that same devil now so his audacity did not end he still believes anywhere he sees god he still has the strength what a stubborn man after many many years you see that so that you will know satan's determination to destroy you when you see who else he has tried you will know how serious he can stay to destroy you if you give him room and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights the bible says afterwards jesus now was unhungered verse 2 when the tempter came to him let's look at the context of the temptation he said number one if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread but he answered jesus now and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god we'll discuss this later then the second temptation watch this satan take it him take it who what does it mean to take somebody this was the guy who was cast down to the earth you would think it was game over and by the time we get here satan has that audacity to take him to a holy city and to set him at the pinnacle of the temple next verse and he said unto him if thou be the son of god cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands shall they bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against a stone next verse and jesus said unto him again it is written thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god now i'm interested in the last temptation if you are a christian and you are interested in what i'm saying please help me read ready one two read again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the kingdoms uh-huh and the glory of them stop please satan the first temptation has to do with your personal needs hunger feed yourself the second temptation has to do with your worship and your spirituality please keep that scripture there but the third temptation now has to do with the kingdom and the glory thereof satan took jesus into a high mountain this is not just climbing a hill no this is a prophetic language what kind of mountain is it that when you stand you see the glories of the whole world this is a spiritual location this is not a physical place that he took him maybe like a mountain and altitude no next verse verse 9 watch this and he saith unto him we finally arrived my place of interest all these things i will give thee <sighs> what a businessman this guy was cast from heaven empty in shame by the time jesus arrives his own earth satan is so wealthy he's saying don't think i am empty just bow to me and i will give you if you will fall down and worship me if you do not understand this you will not understand the system that controls the activities of men that means all the glory that satan acquired from adam he was not interested in it there was something else that was greater than that to him the worship so when jesus came he said let me save you trouble let me save you going through the rigor of three and a half years the cross the grave just bow to me and i will give you these glories verse 10 and jesus said unto him get thee ten satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve this gives us a clue to what satan has been looking for that satan is not looking for the child of a barren woman that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking for the prosperity of a rich man that's not what he's looking for satan is not looking to cut short the life of someone all these things are not the things he's looking for there is something else that he's looking for you need to know what motivates the passion of satan this is it he met jesus and said instead of telling god on the throne to bow since you are his image just bow and i will give you everything are you getting that now watch this this also reveals the character of satan's way of doing business because here we see that satan is a businessman 
make reference to what i'm saying what shall it profit a man if you will gain and lose for you to do business there must be demand and supply and there must be people at the at both ends so satan is a businessman he's not just an accuser and that there is the character of his business are you seeing that now he acquires everything and tells you the only thing i need from you is your allegiance and you will have it and jesus said get thee behind me how did satan get this when you go to genesis chapter 3 when satan was cast down and the earth was judged we dealt with this already genesis 1 verse 2 there was darkness there was void there was formlessness across the face of the earth is that true and then god said light be elohim said light be and there was light and then recreation not the original creation the original creation did not happen in genesis chapter 1 the genesis account was not the first creation the genesis account was a recreation after the judgment of lucifer it was the judgment of lucifer that led to the chaos that we see are we still together now genesis chapter 3 please give it to us genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord had made it may interest you to know that the serpent initially was a beast a beast is a four-footed creature can you see he was subtle than any beast of the field which the lord had made and he said unto the woman notice how satan destroys because according to god's ranking watch this now when god gave man dominion the seraphims are headed by the cherubims the cherubims are headed by the woman the woman is headed by the man man is headed by god this is the organogram now it does not mean i just mean in ranking of honor you get what i'm saying now this is how it is so satan could not have the power to talk to adam there was no reference of a discussion between satan and adam until he fell but what satan wanted was with adam but the only way he could come to adam was to come to his eve you will now know why he's still disturbing the eve of the second adam the church because he's looking for what is in that adam still but he cannot confront that adam again because he's now been exalted lord and christ and there is no space for him so he's still using the same genesis strategy he wanted what adam was given but he had to come through eve let's study the character of that temptation the moment he met the woman he said yeah had god said so the first point of probe is the word of god when satan comes to you he wants to find out what god said because the instance of god's word is where his ministry starts he wants to know what did god say concerning your life what did god say concerning your family if god has not said anything concerning you satan has no business with you he will pass you like this you will call him he will not even come believe me you can say how are you and he says i'm busy but the moment god speaks concerning you satan is ready he's, he's he's ready to stay and find out could that be why attack started in your life the moment prophecy came that there is something you are a child of destiny could that be why africa is under this plague because there is an end time word upon africa that we are that continent that will return christ back that rejected stone Just help those under the anointing. Please pay attention. Give us that scripture you're going. So he questioned the woman. Had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman replies, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Of course, I don't want to go into the whole theological thing. You know that eating there is a prophetic statement. It doesn't necessarily mean physical eating. But because we're, that's not what we're dealing with, let's just let it be so. And he said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, 
God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So there is death tied to that tree. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Let me tell you how Satan attacks. Number one, he studies what God has said to you. Then he brings in a proposition that makes God look like a scammer in your life. Notice now. Is it really true that you can thrive in our world without corruption? Even God knows. And he sugarcoats that truth. Please keep the scripture there. For God doth know. Are you seeing what Satan is telling the woman now? He's saying there is something God is hiding from you. And he was not entirely wrong. There was an information God did not want man to necessarily know. It's the information that was hidden in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But it was for the safety of the man. There are things God says it should not concern you. It's for your safety. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, what will happen? Your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So he's saying that God is not sponsoring your advancement and your growth. He's insecure. There is something he's trying to hide from you. Watch what happened. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof now let me tell you this her eating of the fruit was not what made her fall she had already fallen her eating of the fruit was a was proof that something had entered her and once in a while let me settle this controversy where men blame women the bible says that when she ate she gave to her husband who was with her so adam was there with her she didn't just eat it and go and call him no adam was there with her the woman fell because she was deceived the man fell because of love apostle peter taught us adam was not deceived it was the woman who was deceived so also the second Eve was deceived, but the second Adam was not deceived. What made him leave heaven to the earth? Love. You see that now? The second Adam was not, it was not a, a deceit that brought him. He willingly gave up the throne and came down as proof of his love for his bride. Are we together when that happened let's look at the punishment and then we'll begin to build very quickly and he did eat verse 7 the bible says the eyes of them both were open now notice what happened do you know what this means that the eyes of them both it didn't just mean they were enlightened no there was a rearrangement of god's spiritual structure of how man should perceive it was always the spirit of man first is that true and then the mind and then the body the spirit was always in control the will emotions intellect what we call the mind was next and then the body executed whatever the mind did and the mind was subject to the spirit this act rearranged everything and you will see there that the first thing that followed was you will see attributes of emotions they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves aprons verse 8 and they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. The Hebrew rendition says, and they heard the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. This was a man who God would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with him. The creator and his creature. Now man was running away from the presence of God. And he hid amongst the trees. This was the first man-made solution. The first man-made solution we are aware of. Are you seeing where the first solution came from? Many other solutions have tried to come to solve the problem. The first man-made solution to the sin problem and the problem of separating from God was to run away from God and to come up with a temporary solution. And Adam, the Lord called Adam. Look at how God respects authority. When God gets to the garden, he does not say, all of you come. Mm -mm. Man, I left you as head. 
and you are the first I will speak to. There's no mention that God spoke to Eve until Adam gave him permission. Look how God honors this structure. And the Lord God called Adam and said unto him, Adam, and he said, where art thou? Verse 10. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, but I was afraid. Afraid of what? Because I hid because I was naked. Verse 11. So this is where all deception comes from. And he said, who told you? Adam, what did you allow to get into your thinking? This is not part of the content of what I gave you. Who have you been listening to? Because your life is now executing an information. I, I, am I still making sense? The moment God saw Adam's action, he didn't say, why did you do this? He said, who told you? In other words, your action is only a slave to your thinking. You have listened to someone. So when you see the armed robber stealing, it is not the stealing. When you see the terrorist killing, it is not the killing. When you see the person corrupt, it is not the corruption. The real question is who told you? What is the institution that is feeding your understanding? When a man beats his wife, calls her idiot, stupid, maims the children, abuses everybody, the real question is not why are you beating her? The hand is honoring something here. The real question is who told you? Respectfully speaking, when a politician sits in office and siphons resources that should be for roads, siphons resources that should be for several other things, the real question is not what took your hand there, is who told you? This is from the mouth of God himself. This is how God addresses problems. He does not address problems by looking at actions. He addresses problems by looking at the motivation. You're, you are honoring a conviction. When you know this, you will know how to help people, whether in the prison, the correctional centers, and all around. That's why I said this is not just a message for Christians. The moment you find people walking in a way that should not be, the first part of call is not their action. The first part of call is to attack the information that is creating their conviction. Until that information is corrected, they will always act in honor to their convictions. So when there is a high rate of irresponsibility among people within a society, it's not about why are you not working or why are you lazy. Go back and find out the voice that is feeding them. Who told you? Please give us the scripture. Who told you that you were naked? Hast thou eaten of that tree? Whereof I commanded that thou should not eat. The first demonstration of irresponsibility from the Bible. Are you ready to see it? The man said, the woman. That's where Adam lost his authority. Every time you blame something else, you transfer authority to it. That's how Adam transferred authority to Eve. You will now see that it was after this statement, God started talking to Eve. And the man said, the woman that thou gavest to be with me, in other words, is between you and her. If you did not bring her here, I will be all right. You see what is wrong with the man? And she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord said to the woman, the first time he's talking to the woman, after the man sealed his sense of irresponsibility, he said, what is this that thou hast done? This is how the woman gave Satan authority. The woman said, the serpent. If the woman kept quiet, she would be head over man immediately. The woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did eat let me tell you how satan became the god of this world and the lord said to satan because you have done this out of the four of them the only person who did not talk was the person who eventually carried the authority man spoke transferred his authority to the woman the woman spoke transferred her authority to the serpent the serpent kept quiet so when Jesus was with Pontius Pilate, wanting to restore the authority, while they were talking, what did he do? This also means there is a dimension of dominion that is expressed in silence. 
generally speaking when people talk too much it is considered that they are irrational and there is a level of immaturity this is true whether in government in business in family there is a level of maturity notice when they came and met jesus a woman who was caught in adultery what did he do he kept quiet and was just writing and he got off from the standpoint of wisdom and said he who has no sin should cast the first stone end of discussion even a fool the bible says when he is silent he is considered wise are we learning the ways of god next scripture the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. 15. I will put enmity between the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh huh. Verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life. And then when you read, he says thorns and thistles will come out he drove them out of eden and then there was a cherubim and a flaming sword that protected eden from this instance we begin to see a manifestation of toiling of hardship is that true then the bible tells us that adam knew his wife and she bore him cain and abel now there's a lot of theological argument as to whether cain and abel were twins because the bible does not make reference of eve getting pregnant again the next time the bible tells us adam knew his wife she gives birth to a son called enoch and he says men began to call upon the name of the lord is that true but then you will notice something very strange in every expression of the genealogy in the bible cain and abel are not mentioned read the genealogy in the gospel whenever it gets to enoch the son of adam the son of god so we know for sure that there is a mystery behind these two fellows cain and abel because when we get to the pauline epistles paul begins to give us a revelation of cain and abel as an expression of the spirit and the flesh is that true abel being representing the spirit man and the spirit walk and cain representing the flesh but that's not where i'm headed to now we're in a situation where we want to investigate how this demonic software spread to come to our region now are we together now the bible says in the book of genesis chapter 6 let's look at genesis chapter 6 be patient you'll begin to make sense to you genesis in fact let's start with genesis 4 genesis chapter 4 uh verse 16 let's look at genesis 4 16 the bible says and cain went out of the presence of the lord look up please very interesting statement it was a psalmist who said where can i hide from your presence so now he's saying cain went out of the presence of god do you know what this means cain willingly unsubscribed to the governing influence of heaven as an act of his will i am no longer interested in you god i'm not interested in your government i want to live my life by myself so we see direct rebellion against the government of god and he dwelt in the land of nod in the east of eden uh-huh and cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare enoch and he builded a city let me correct myself seth not enoch forgive me the the other son of of adam is seth not enoch enoch was the first son of cain and he built a city wow so this is the first time we see that a man is attempting to build a city outside of the governing influence of the christ notice the character of the antichrist system 
the moment it rebels against god it seeks to build something a monument that honors self number two do you notice that cain built the city and he named the city after his son satan never says worship me he will always project something that came out of him revelation 13 you will see right the beast projects the antichrist and says to worship the antichrist remember that dragon satan will never come and say worship me directly as it were but he will build something that comes out from him and say worship it. this is the character of his subjugated men and bringing men under this antichrist system Cain did not name the city after him he named the city after his son enoch from that time watch this rebellion people did not subscribe to the government of god again by the time we get to genesis chapter 6 give us genesis chapter 6 we'll read from verse 1 but verse 5 is a verse of emphasis genesis 6 and verse 1 look up please and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them uh-huh the bible says verse 2 the sons of god saw the daughters of men i don't want to get into this there is a big confusion around here but i know we talk about the nephilims the giant the the, the race of giants um, the nephilims are not the only race of giants but they are a unique race of giants because they came as as a product of intercourse between these fallen angels the daughters of men the, the children that came from that union they are called the nephilims giants they were superhumans an example was goliath of gath another example oak the king of bashan you read all these people and you see that they were they had superhuman qualities and can i surprise you there is still a remnant of that race here it is not expressed in their being huge is expressed by the unusual way they operate it is not only pure humans that are on earth there are other humanoid species on earth the bible tells us the coming of christ will be like the days of noah in the days of noah they were not alone there were other humanoid species that are now interacting you see science talks about ufos talks about all of these things they are not telling lies it is true there are all kinds of alien civilizations that have been here and others that are coming and attempting to corrupt the race when you know all of this you will know why the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him above and given him a name above every other name above every other name means there are many names and all those names carry levels of authority are we together next verse the sons of god saw that the daughters of men were fair and they took them to wives of all which they chose verse 3 and the lord said watch this now god is speaking my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is he is also his flesh and his days shall be a hundred and twenty years there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they bear children to them the same became mighty men who were men of renown verse 5 this is where i wanted us to get to and god saw please look up believers and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every so this is the source of the wickedness the source of the wickedness is not just satan that this wickedness also depends on creativity his imagination has a role to play and the thoughts in his heart are you seeing that now god again is addressing this problem you see that every time god addresses man he does not just address what you are doing he addresses the fact that there a spirit has hijacked your imagination and your creativity follow me closely because we are going to get to a point where we see the value of transformation that for as long as the only thing we do is evangelism we are going to produce a very godless society to your shock that people are just saved and just remain there nothing happens to their mind their minds will still become fruitful tools that the devil will use evangelism transformation 
empowerment these are the keys that preserve evangelism brings them transformation changes them empowerment now increases them and releases them to be effective people what has happened largely in the church is that we have done extremely well and by the privilege of god's grace we have to give it to the church we have done well in terms of evangelism but then we bring in a lot of harvests and we leave them there and they do not know what to do and satan says well the best would have been to stop you from receiving jesus but now that i cannot do anything about your decision i am glad that your mind is still a barren and a fruitful ground for me so you find out that there is no difference between a believer and an unbeliever as far as societal transformation is concerned because an heir as long as he's a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all are we together please keep that scripture i hope god is helping us i know it's a long journey just be patient i need to be this meticulous so that we will really understand don't forget where we are coming from from heaven war in heaven satan comes down to the earth and we see that wickedness has filled everywhere we are examining how satan became so effective in this agenda that even though the people who were perpetrators of those wickedness they are long dead but the agenda still remains the same hmm. and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so before a man becomes an armed robber he does not just go and pick up a gun ladies and gentlemen satan comes to that man and before he introduces that concept to that man to destroy he first checks what is in his mind satan is a master with checking minds even when he's delivered jesus taught us he returns back and checks what is there if he finds the room swept clean but empty will he leave it empty he will go and gather other spirits so he finds a young man visionary great young man he finds a great woman visionary great woman but then he sees that there is no methodical system of transferring the principles the value system of the kingdom into that person are we together now what happens is that he now fashions a strategy of deception how does he deceive by proposing to you something that only god can give why do people take drugs why do occultists and all these people do what they do because they want to get high they and in that state they feel superior why do people join cultism in campuses because there is a proposition to them they let them know that if you join this occultic group there is some kind of immunity is that true why do we have all kinds of deadly clubs and societies today that destroy people because they they attach some sense of significance to it why do you suddenly respect me when you see a nice shoe and a nice dress it doesn't matter whether i'm a nice person or not because you have been trained that once you see that physical expression it may mean that i am greater and more superior than someone so if that is the system of marketing a lot of young people who would have started their lives growing with honor and dignity to scale till they become responsible they will find a way of getting tomorrow to arrive today since you have told me that the only way to respect me is when i wear a designer shoe a designer watch satan now capitalizes on that mindset and says look i can show you a way 10 years to be blessed is too long do you have that time no after all god gives speed you say it's true so he will tell you now listen i'm going to tie it up with the scripture we also read what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul the mindset the value system the imagination of people hijacked by the power of darkness so satan does not mind whether you are Igbo. He does not mind whether you are Yoruba. He does not mind whether you are 
you are Hausa. He does not mind whether you are an American, an European, an Asian. He knows that we all have the same mind. So he began to trace all across the earth. What are the systems that speak to the mindset of people? He found that culture has a way of helping to frame mindset. So he became interested in culture. What part of that content can I use to preserve continuity of a demonic mindset? He found out that money seems to control loyalty. People can bow to you when you have money. So he went to the economy of the earth. He's called the king of Tyre. He sits there on that mountain to make sure you never get blessed with your soul healthy. When you come to him and say, I want to prosper, I want my children to go to church, or I'm a man of God, I'm trusting that financial resources be made available for kingdom activity. Satan says, all that is nonsense. There is only one condition. Bow to me. I hope you know that Jesus rejected that proposal, but it is not only Jesus Satan has taken to that mountain. There are many others that he held their hands. I want to become famous. I want the whole world to know me. And he says, come. There is a mountain where I show you the glories of the world. If it's money, you can have it. Anything, you can have it. The only thing I want from you is that you must pledge a covenant of allegiance that for as long as you enjoy these things, your worship will be to me. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.